Good evening. Um, welcome to the April 28th uh, meeting of the Northampton Planning Board. Um, we start each of these meetings with an opportunity for the public to make a comment on something not on the agenda, so it's just an opportunity to bring things to our attention. Anybody got anything they want to bring up tonight? All righty. Um, I'd like to open the agenda item, schedule for seven o'clock plan for construction of 3,850 square feet auto mechanics building at 1812 Auto, located at 130 Spring Street, Florence, map ID 228-B-8. Uh, is there a presentation or, or words? Yeah. Hi, my name is Tom Pees. I live at 130 Spring Street in Florence. And that is the address also of the shop that I started back in 1984. The auto body, now it's turned into auto body and mechanical shop. It's a long time. Okay. Um, this is the overlay that I drew up. Um, this, is, this is our house, Spring Street, the recreational fields right across that are just, were just completed. The auto body shop that uh, we got the permit for back in 1984, and our proposal is this mechanical shop here. It's actually 55 by 70, whatever the 3850 came out to be. Um, we uh, set it so that it's 35 feet away from our neighbor, who is, uh, which is residential, 40 and 60 feet back from Spring Street. Um, our proposal, of course, is to build a building and we're requesting a curb cut right in front of the building here. There's a crosswalk that they just put in for the uh, recreational fields, and we're gonna be at least 60, 65 feet away from that crosswalk. There is another crosswalk here right in front of my house that they just put in also for the uh, recreational fields. Um, with that, I'll answer any questions that you have. Looking at the picture, where is your existing driveway in relation to the crosswalk? Is it is it right on top of it? Um, well, I see, our oh, I see it. Right yeah. Here. Yeah. The crosswalk is right in front of the house. Yeah. So Did that that existing the stripes are. Yeah. So that existing drive is. Yeah. Staff comments were to to reduce that from 30 feet. That's it's about that, 38. To 24. It looks like. 38. I, I measured it at 36, but I could have been off with the curve. You know. I was using this, so your yeah. measurement's probably more accurate. <laughs> yeah. But the thought was to reduce that to 24 and, and pull it away from the crosswalk? Right. So the maximum allowed um, curb cut width is 24 feet for commercial use. Um, um, DPW also had that comment about the width of that curb cut and making it narrower there and pulling it away from that crosswalk. Obviously, we make it safer, um, and it also pulls it further away from that intersection with Meadow Street. But that's only if you put the other curb cut in. Right. Well, um, the whole project is, you're looking at the site plan for the whole site. So you could take the opportunity, the, there's a special, you know, there's site plan approval for the second curb cut plus site plan approval for the building itself. Right. So all of that is in play. I think if you did find that the second curb cut um, would improve safety for circulation of vehicles coming and going from the site for the different sides of the businesses, I would certainly recommend that um, the existing curb cut be narrowed. I'd probably recommend it under any either scenario. It, it, you could narrow the curb cut without having the second curb cut. You could narrow the right. first, mm -hmm. okay. Okay. That okay. curb cuts. We're, sorry. Uh, we're requesting that second curb cut for the mechanical building, also to reduce anywhere from 30 to 40 percent of the cars coming into that original curb cut for state inspections. All the state inspections will be moved to the mechanical building, which is the second curb cut. So it eliminates a lot of cars going in and out of the driveway all day long, Saturdays. I mean, we've even had them come in Sundays for stickers. So. Oh. Yeah. We know they're direct a lot away from that crosswalk. Yep. Which we see, you know, we see it all day long. We, you know, we're, we're concerned too. I mean, that's why, yep. that's why we're doing this. Um, Carolyn, that uh, driveway would not be legal in relation to its proximity to the intersection the way it is right now, would it? 
we wouldn't we wouldn't allow that driveway to go in there um just I offsetting believe it because meadow street was um modified yeah. uh, i believe yeah. it meets the 50 foot offset i'm just going to do a quick measurement here okay see they, they changed it it used to meadow street uh, yeah. used to go straight yeah. across yeah there. yeah yep. you can see like that a little island here mm. yep so, yeah it probably it just makes the 50 foot okay well it doesn't hurt to reinforce that story that curb cut that's proposed is directly across from the houses that are there so all those cars will then come and go immediately across from residential? Mm -hmm. Yeah, just it's the same as a car, the house that's across from us now. Like I said, we're <coughs> diverting some out of that, the, the first curb cut into the second one to the mechanical shop. So in other words, without the curb cut, the cars would just have to sneak through that little gap between yep, the right. edge of the building. Yep, and it really get jammed up. And how does the proposed curb cut driveway line up with the the driveway across the street? It's not directly across from it. No, it's only we're approximately 55 feet from that crosswalk that was put in for the rec department. Uh huh. So it'd be to the east. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It will not be directly across. I was out there. It's not directly across from somebody else's driveway. Okay. This, um, just the actual picture here, just makes this with the bill, it just makes it look a little tighter than, so the building would sit pretty far back, like yeah. as it looks, but the back of it will be even with the existing building. Even with the existing building, yes. So there will be, okay. all the, where are all those cars? They're gone. They're gone already. They're gone, it's all vacant now. Okay. That was taken many, many years ago when we were, I think, there were a lot of abandoned cars because we do towing for the city, and they've since been cleaned up. So people coming to the mechanical building will, people using the sec, the new right. car curb cut will be going there. People, I mean, there's not, gonna, there won't be right. back and forth. No. Okay. No. Well, and I think it looks tighter because the shadow of that building is moving. It could be. Right. So, yeah. So. How late? I'm looking at the, the proposed curb cut. So you're. You're across the street right. from that other house. Um, so do you have nighttime hours? So if, if people are leaving, where their headlights be going right in? Yeah. The, uh, the hours that were permitted, I think we're only 7 to 7. seven, or, to seven. Yeah. We do 24-hour towing, but there's a fence there. And when they come in at night, they just, the, the fence, we're going to have an electric fence up there, you know, at mm -hmm. the gate that closes automatically. No, there won't be anybody going leaving after that. In fact, we cannot, we don't do any state inspections after 4.30, 5 o'clock. Uh, so I'm going to shut it down. And that's how you're permitted, so that can't change? Right. Well, according to the state, we can do stickers 24-7 if we wanted to, but we, we choose to do them only up until 5 o'clock. Mm -hmm. What kind of additional lighting is going to be at or around that building? We're not, we're not, we'll maybe put a motion detector in the back of the building, but there'll be no lighting in the, in the front, maybe uh, signage, that's all. We have some lighting now off the existing building that we light up when we're towing a car in, taking a car out. But that's the only time the lights are lit. Uh, Carolyn, is there any reason, it sounds like, like the, the applicant right now won't be an issue, but in 20 years if there's a transition and there's new owners and they want to have a 24-hour auto body shop and, I'm, and there's cars lined up to get out and their headlights are shining across the street at the, at the neighbors across the street and driving them crazy, is there, is it permitted so it can't go past seven, do you know, or is that something that we I would, put as a condition? I would say you would want to put that as a condition because this is a new um, portion of the business and new curb cut. And based on the curb cut location, it seems it would be appropriate to think about the, that impact. Um, and if it weren't a permit condition, then that's right. It's, it's general industrial zone, so any other use that comes in that complies with the GEI zone could have operate. There's nothing in the zoning that says you can right. only operate from X hours to X hours. So yep. 
the uh, issue with the headlights, the, you can't see it with the overview, but there's a seven foot fence all the way around. You cannot see through the fence because I, we put up a chain link fence mm -hmm. and inserted the, the coney pine tree stuff. You know, that looks like pine needles. So it's pretty tough to see through it. I'm just thinking when people leave, when the gate opens, oh, people I, I are leaving. That, yeah. And they're sitting there waiting for traffic and their lights are right in the living room across the street. Though, I mean, you could always use the other we could always, yeah, we could always scoot down the other end, mm -hmm. the, uh, the alleyway. Typically, people, we try to get them picked up by, you know, 5.30 or 6 o'clock. You know, we, we start, we ourselves, we open up the shop at 6 in the morning and start our paperwork. So it makes, uh, makes for a long day for us, too. Right. Yeah, I, I don't see it really being an issue for you. I'm just thinking yeah. ahead. Yeah, I right. think I'd like to talk about the time frame for that, you know, what we think is appropriate. But I think we are not at all thinking about your operation, but just the fact that we create the rules that stay with the building. And it is residential across the street. Yeah. Um, Carolyn, could you, I mean, along this issue, but also trying to not be as restrictive on the business, could you restrict the use of that particular curb cut but leave the other one I mean could you I don't know if could you do that like restrict it that one that's across from residential for certain hours but leave the other one in case um, you know a business right. changes over you know just well I mean um, uh, Mr. Pease noted that he that there would be an electric fence uh, an electric gate. operated yeah. gate mm -hmm. um, so you know you could have a permit condition that says the gate the, the driveway should be closed off for access after a certain hour, that, that driveway. Um, so that effectively also blocks that well, use. Well, and I know it's not directly across from the house that's on the right-hand end of the road, but for anybody turning out going towards Leeds, that they're going to, the light's there. So I'm, I don't think, I, I feel like dealing with one resident differently than we deal with the other resident, it, just because they're in different locations. I well, I just, <coughs> because it's not directly across. Right. I mean, that was only and it's the second curb cut that you're granted. Right. And two yeah. is what you said. Right. Yeah. Much as it doesn't seem likely, one of the things that we always talk about are bike racks. So um, I know you're a car dealer, <laughs> you know, you're dealing in four wheels, but um, we, maybe your employees would want to come on a bike or you know you are now in an area that's picking up more bike traffic because of the recreation fields so um, I would anticipate that we would ask you to install a bike rack on a new building and people come in with their cars and take the bikes off and, and take off so <laughs> that's how I do it happens all the time We're that's that's well that. that's we'll how I do it put, absolutely put that in because I think that the bike path someday is going to be connected to across yeah. the river right so it's, we're going to get more bicycle activity. We do now. They're using that sidewalk. They're circling around the uh, Good. fields. So yeah, all right, we're okay. We're absolutely open for that. Good idea. <laughs> any uh, any other questions for Mr. Peace? Um, I, I guess just one thing. So, I mean, most of the time when we get a plan presented to us, there's some type of landscaping plan that goes with it um, sometimes it's an opportunity to pretty up the side of the street a little bit but we, we don't have that in front of us I don't know if there's a landscaping oh, plan that I goes think, with this I think or I put it on one of the overlays I have I think I count out 44 on the bike I also have that green fence here alongside our residential neighbor uh -huh. 44 Arbor Vitis are starting at three and four foot tall. Along Spring Street? Right along, right along our residential oh, so The front of it has that greenery, mm -hmm. and then on the other side of the greenery, I've got nothing. i got vines and shrubs growing outside of there between that and the sidewalk. And what kind of shape is that right. sidewalk in? Mm -hmm. Straight Bill, yeah. yeah. well, he has 45 Arbor and 45? three pine trees. Yeah. Frank trees here. Mm -hmm. oh, you're getting slick, Carolyn. See, that's the green, the green fence. There's the greenery in front of the fence. Mm -hmm. We try to keep it so people are going by, they don't see any cars, and once in a while they see a big truck in there. Mm -hmm. So that fence is right on the sidewalk, right? No, it's about five back. feet. 
from the track. Oh, I see. Okay. So, can you explain again? The arborvitae would go on the side, on the westerly side. Yep, the complete Going length. Up Spring Street. And I think I kind of was a 45, 45 yeah. arborvitae. And, and so that's already a fence. So you're actually shielding the fence that from way. The I'm already shielding it, right. but I wanted to do something for the for the neighbor also. Put those in, and in fact, they're great because you can direct sunlight almost all day long. So that's what they thrive on. Okay. So is that a condition? I mean, there he's putting them in, which is great, but we can make that a condition. Well, it's part of the part plan. Of the plan. Oh, so, so that's permanent? He put it, so, mm -hmm. right, so okay. it's on the application, so gotcha. he has to build Compile. it according to the right. plan that was submitted. Right. And I, the DPW sign with the stormwater runoff. Um, so they did make a comment, so these, these came in this afternoon, um, which is why I couldn't get them to you. Um, uh, comments about the um, water and sewer connections, and we had already discussed with the applicant the fact that that wasn't shown on the plan. And the water service to the proposed building shall be from a T after the meter in the existing building. No new service connection and meter will be allowed. The plan shows a second curb cut for the property on spring. Street, typically two curb cuts are not allowed. The existing curb cut on Spring Street is greater than standard of maximum 24 feet. I think that's just sort of acknowledging that the board has the jurisdiction, yeah. you know, for under for that second curb cut um, and they don't. The plan does not show how roof or site drainage will be managed. Drainage shall be managed on site. No water shall flow onto the roadway. So I think that could be a condition. Um, I think on the application it's explained that there the sh it would sheet flow to the size on the property, but um, just to make that clear, I think it would make sense to be. Because I had water runoff here yep. on, on the front area here, running to the east, and then off the roof, running directly to the south. Yeah, to the south. So they're in fact talking with some of the people that do the will do the curb cut or whatever. Our roadway going in, in and out will be lower than the street. There will be nothing going out on the street. <clears throat> well, and what are the required setbacks for that in the industrial area? Those uh, look pretty, pretty ample. Generous, yeah. Right. Tw actually, they're, mu they're much um, less than that, 20 feet on the front, yeah. and I believe 15 on the side. Yeah. Um, except that it does about a residential district, so typically you have the buffer anyway that um, creates a greater setback. Well, and the trees that you're talking about planting will be useful for that regard too. Right. So I'm just, I'm just in thinking out loud that I'm, I'm pleased that we've got a little extra area around yeah. the building that's going to help with controlling the water as well. Um, any other board questions? Um, just one thing back to the front landscaping. I mean, the green fence does provide that buffer, I think, for the neighbors. And um, I guess what happens if someone decides to take the green fence down sometime? sometime? I guess just to have something that so there's a some type of requirement for some type of maybe permanence of, of, of a barrier there. Um, well, you can certainly make that a condition too. That the the fence, as shown on the plan, should remain um, or be um, should be maintained as long as um, the auto body use. Yeah, I don't know that Bill's talking about the fence as much as the existing greenery should. should yeah, be. well, yeah, if, some if type of uh, barrier, I think, right. um, whether it be a fence or whether it be shrubbery. But um, I think the the landscape of that street would change dramatically without that fence there. And to me, good planning uh, would require some type of. Would you require that on the inside of the fence or the sidewalk side? Sidewalk side. Street side. Sidewalk side, because that would change what I would put in there because Arborvitaes need a lot of sunlight, and that does get shaded. So I have to put some other kind of a yeah. I think a spruce or I think what we're thinking about is not you and your situation, but if those go away, the the greenery that currently exists right. in front of that fence, we're just interested in trying to maintain that into the future. Okay. 
Uh, along along Spring Street. Along yep. Spring right. Street. Yep. So to and what about to the extent that if the trees? I'm not sure if and I don't know if you know if the, those trees are in the right of way or are they on your property? I believe they're on our property. Okay. Yeah. The so feet, there is the sidewalk coming down, but it it's dead. It it's just hollowed line. out. And look at it. It's coming down. Nothing grows on it or near it. So I don't know if you know if you want a condition about the fence should remain and then if um, and then the vegetation as presented and um, if it has to be maintained and if a tree trees need to be replaced if they so you uh, say the die fence or and veg down? vegetation should be maintained along Spring Street. Saw Louis saw it and he didn't have any issues with it. A um, couple of things I like about it, I'm, you know, we would be worried about outdoor lighting affecting the neighbors. We're already handling that. Yep. Um, I'm kind of encouraged to tell you the truth that you're coming in with your drawings talking to us about doing a new business. I mean, that's um, instead of you didn't feel like you had to get. A, a large design company to come in and make oh, yeah. the presentation. No, I, well, it's a family business. Yep. My wife and my two boys, and one boy will be running the auto body shop, and the other one is doing mechanical. And they'll take care of my oldest boys. <laughs> Keep him off. Working out in the middle of the winter outside. Keep him off the street. Fire. So we need that. And, and actually, to be honest with you, the community's been very good to us. Good. Very, very good to us, and we want to stay. So we would typically now open the meeting up for any of the public that wants to comment. There's an art hat, and then there's the other part of the ownership. <laughs> would you like to say anything? I'm fine. Tom and I have gone over these plans so many times, and we I bet you have everything into consideration, and we talk to the neighbors across the street so they know what we're doing before we even came to you. Yep. So it's a big decision. I'm sure you have. Yeah. And the greatest thing for us is the fact we have fields across the street that it's a big pass. It's great to see soccer. Well, 400 kids out there. Let's just say we're still paying on the bond. Uh, yeah. We're happy to do yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. State your name. I'm Andrew Church. I own the abutting property. Uh, the only question I have about here, and this is when, if you all remember when you did redid Meadow Street, the layout of the street, supposedly you found back in 18 whatever year it was that there was a wider layout of the street. And I know that these lots, my lots and, and this lot, they come into the street on an angle, actually a pretty sharp angle. And so when they went to the larger layout of the street of Spring Street, what that effectively did was move our lot down the street four feet, if you know what I mean. Actually, when they did that, they made everybody's survey on the street incorrect. Uh-huh. And so that's my only concern because I know that I had some other surveying done and where they had set pins prior to them putting, redoing Spring Street, and then it came out and they, so now I have two pins and they're four feet apart, so you end up losing four feet coming down the street. Huh. So I, I just want to know about that because I know my line moved down, so it seems like everybody else would move down. That's the only question I have. Thank you. Um, you certainly got that on the public record. Any comment, Carol? Is it a DPW issue to chase down? Is it? Well, I'm not sure if it's an issue to. I mean, certainly, if if he wants to find out where the um, property or the layout lines are, I mean, there may be still fee simple underlying ownership of the land. It's just the layout of the right of way maybe has changed. Um, that's certainly a DPW question. Uh, for you all, you're considering this property and project um, as presented with the so, lot lines. But 
and, and I'll take that as an answer, but we, we've opened this up for public comment. He, we've learned something about the layout of the street. What advice can we give to ho how you get that resolved or at least answered? It's a DBW question. I don't think it affects this property in the way that, that you know, basically the way it's shown. Mm -hmm. the, there's nothing to do with setbacks. There's um, DBW has to approve the location of the yeah. curb cut. And again, the layout may be wider, meaning the right of way over the ownership of the land by the private abutting parcel owners. But that's not, you know, it, the, the research can be done potentially at DPW, so I recommend that. Part of an answer. Um, I, I think you see it's not really our purview, but um, I think if, if you want to understand what the two different pins mean to the DPW, they're, they're the only ones that could probably answer. Whether that's a right-of-way pin or whether it's a, you know, I don't like you feeling like you lost four feet. If you, if you, if you think about it, if you, if you have something that's coming in on a 90 degree angle, okay, and you change the width of the roadway, it doesn't change the lot line at all, or the frontage or anything. But if it's coming in on a very steep angle, okay, and you widen it, what happens is you push that pin down and it, it, it amounts to four feet on my property. You, do you see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So you're actually talking about the pin that is defining your sideline lot. The frontage lot. Frontage mm -hmm. lot, okay. Along with it, pretty right. much all the other lots on Spring Street. Right. I'd, I'd say an organized letter to the DPW is your path of action. Yeah, it's, because it's more, already put yeah. in the street. You know, well, that, yeah, but. I, I just wanted you to be aware of it because I know, I just know it to be a fact. Okay, thank you. Any comment about the building that's being proposed? It's his property. I feel like he owns it. He should be able to do what he wants with it. All right. So I move we close public comment. Uh, Carla, second. Second. Mark. Um, any other board discussion? You know, this is a f funny piece of property because it juts way into neighborhood, and it was been there for a long time before the zoning was what it currently is. I'm quite sure, right. but uh, that curb cut bothers me. Um, it, I think it's going to pull a lot more cars turning in front of those houses. I'm, it just seems like uh, the wrong place. I mean, we can't help the fact that that's industrial. It is what it is. So I, I you know, there's nothing we can do about that. But I'm, I'm not real happy about that curb cut. I, I don't would tend to agree that the fact that the, the car is pulling in up there more often, especially that most of traffic is generated by those inspections and less traffic in the existing curb cut uh, would offset those concerns or it might even cre create a, a safer environment. I mean, that's how I see it. But. I think that the existing driveway is just in a tough spot. I mean, it's always been a tough spot, so if we shrink that down a little bit and the traffic's going to be reduced from that spot anyway then, then I'm okay with the second curb cut. All right, so um, could I ask Carolyn to review the things that we've talked about and as conditions and we could sort of, I'm going to look around and get a sort of nod or if you have something you want to say about them, <coughs> now's the time. Okay, so um, the existing curb cut um, should be reduced to 24 feet. Um, um, one, They'll at be least in the minutes. We'll put at it least on the permit. at least one um, bike storage um, rack. Um, all um, drainage shall be maintained on site. On site, not just off the road. On site altogether. Right. Yep. Um, and um, the fence and vegetation along the Spring Street frontage 
shall, shall be, be maintained, maintained and uh, vegetation replaced as necessary. And um, I think that's all that I had to do. Right. Oh, hours of operation to be going up. Yeah, I would like not to restrict it to just his business hours. I mean, I think we, we, you know, his business hours are daylight, actually. So, I mean, I don't want to extend it much, but I'm willing to entertain something other than 7 to 7 if you, you want to. I, I'm not sure they're not 7 to 7 now, are they? They are? Yeah. And 7 o'clock at night in the winter, that's, that's dark. dark. Okay. Any more discussion about that? Are we restricting it just for the second, for the new curb cut, or are we restricting it altogether? I don't know that we have a yeah. reason to. I was thinking about the second curb cut. Yeah. Right. And then. Well, the nice thing about that flexibility is there is another gate. So, I mean, right. th there is a way around that building to get to the larger entrance. Yeah. I wouldn't want to. I just I don't know if that's really that. necessary. I mean, I don't really see a whole lot of traffic going in and out of a second curb cut after seven o'clock, mm -hmm. and I just think it's unnecessary. But I don't think for them I'd right. see it at all. But I'm I'm thinking, you know, 20 years down the line, who knows, who knows, and then you don't want. Yeah, but I mean, still, it's kind of stretching it. I think, but. Stretching the what ifs, I guess. Yeah. I just think we have enough, just because of where it is, it's in an odd spot with, with house. If this was in a general industrial with other businesses around it, we wouldn't have this discussion. The only reason we are is because there are houses right across the street. Right. And so, and one thing we talked about is uh, exterior lighting isn't an issue now, but do we want to make that so it's not an issue in the future, too? And maybe that, in the past, we've said uh, exterior lights turn off, you know, within an hour after close of business or something like that. So it's not, we don't give really a time. It's just. Uh, well, we could stipulate the what's, I mean, you know, we've got a zero lot line, you know, mm -hmm. spill for light in the. In but the that's zoning anyway, so you don't right, have to. Right, so you have to do that anyway. Yeah. I don't know what you think about that, if that's even needed. Any other opinions on that? My reaction is we're talking about things that are not bothersome to you and they give us some peace of mind in the future. The only comment I can make about the lighting late at night is only when the tow truck comes in, when the light comes on, he unloads and you leave when the light goes out. It's not, we don't, I don't want it on at night. No. I, I live there, so. Yeah. But that could happen, as you say, on and off all night long, just it's you're you're running that towing business at night. Yeah. Yeah. We get too many calls, so. but yeah, I understand. So I would rather not restrict that, but I'm not sure how to word it in such a way that we get what we want, which is uh, some c some control over what other businesses come in in decades coming. Um, I I do think. We're in a residential area. I mean, he's, it's your home. I'm happy to say it's your home, but, um, and that's why I think the, the relationship will be well handled as far as harassment of the neighbors with light and noise and traffic. I mean, would we just do like we do in other businesses where you say the lights are, lights are off? So if somebody moves in and they, they want to keep, for safety or security, they want to keep their parking lot lights on all night. Mm -hmm. And they, they, they say it's all for security, yep. but the neighbors across the street drives them nuts. So maybe just say the lights are off, you know, an hour after closing. An hour after closing business? Can I get a nod mm -hmm. on whether we agree with that? Right. Good. 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 No, it's it's not. It's really at this point debatable among us, oh, not okay. you. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, Carolyn, uh, the dark sky. I mean, what are the Requirements. I mean, is it zero spill? Yeah. So right. I mean, I mean that should take care of. I would think the dark sky could take care of this. Right. But I think the the other issue is, 
are you what at what level is the majority of the board concerned about lighting? I mean, it's it's a business district. Sight lights are allowed. The, the zoning determines what level of lights are allowed. So the next business that comes in um, may um, decide to install new lights that comply with the ordinance. We don't have a curfew, but it is a business district. Mm -hmm. But it sounded like you were starting down a vein of being concerned about headlights and use of that driveway as opposed to the site lighting. Right. So yeah. I don't think you should use the site lighting as a proxy for the concern about right. the driveway headlights. I, but me, I think um, it's separate. I think of you know the Atwood Drive medical complex, which there's not a house within a mile of that, but we have those lights turn off within an hour of business or 10 okay. o'clock at night or whatever the, you know, so to me, I, I'm, I'm thinking about this just like it's another business, not because there's houses across the street, but because we have an opportunity right. to regulate it. And I guess I'm not sure, maybe it, um, it doesn't sound like there's sight lights, but there's a building light, a motion sensor light on the building. Right. So um, to, so without, so then new site lights would have to be put on that would that would then be restricted by a condition is what you're suggesting yeah. in the future. Like permanent lighting. I mean a night light that's that's security and that's on and then off. That's I don't know if I, that's how I don't know how other people feel but I'm I'm thinking this we should treat this as any other business. So the lights aren't on pre, with dark skies we don't want the lights on all night just like we don't want it on any other business. I would agree with that. I mean, there's no reason to have lights on all night long when there's, it is in a residential neighborhood. Um, so an hour after business is what you're suggesting, so site lighting, and that, that, would, that addresses that issue, but maybe there's still an issue about the driveway. Um, I, I'd, I'd just like to weigh in on the lighting issue. We have been doing that, and I think if we're going to continue mm -hmm. to do that, this is a situation where I don't even feel like it's an onerous, you know, request as a condition. So mm -hmm. it it seems consistent with what we've been doing in the past, and we should feel that good about that. Um, so now on to the topic about the driveway and the use of that driveway after uh, after dark. I don't have a concern with it. I think it was brought up and the applicant was receptive to it to uh, um, stop use of that secondary curb cut after 7 o'clock. I think that should be part of it. Would that make you feel better about having a second curb cut? Not much, but... <laughs> <laughs> okay. So do you want to vote on the conditions separately or do you want to just agree that we have a set of conditions that we've, we think make sense for this? Yeah. Not around anybody who wants it separate should say so now. Okay. Uh, could I entertain a motion? Mark. I make a motion to approve the site plan for construction for 3,850 square foot auto mechanics building at 1812 auto at 130 Spring Street, Florence Map ID 22B 8, with the following conditions reducing the existing curb cut to 24 feet, addition of a bike rack, maintain uh, storm runoff and drainage on site maintain the existing fence and vegetation along Spring Street. Um, hours of operation for the second curb cut or close the second, how do I say restrict this? Second, use restrict of use of second curb cut after 7 o'clock, 7 p.m. And site lighting uh, should be turned off within an hour of closing. Second, I, John. Good job. Thanks for the notes. All in favor? Opposed? Abstained? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Uh, so, our huh? Yeah. Uh, Carolyn has some things that she would like for us to consider tonight. Um, so, actually, I think it's just so we there's one A and R. This is the um, Christian Ch Science Church on Center and Masonic Street. 
Um, whoops, turn it over. Um, you want to carve off the reading room, which fronts Masonic Street, mm -hmm. and sell that separate parcel, mm -hmm. and maintain the main part of the church mm -hmm. building and the rest of the site. Can I see that? Yes. Yeah. So, so Masonic Street here, Center Street, yeah. police station over here, um, the old fire station. It does seem like an yeah. office more. It does. So what are they doing? So they're just carving building. this <laughs> off the reading room. That, that's, a, that's a separate building. Yeah. Building. It's yeah. a separate building. It is connected by this little breezeway. Oh, okay. Um, but they're going to demolish that. Yeah. After. I see. Okay. But the parking doesn't go with it. Just the there is a row of parking that will go with it. We don't have a minimum parking requirement in central business. Um, but, um, so, uh, and we don't have minimum lot size or minimum frontage. So there's... Um, there are no requirements for other permitting to um, to create the layout with the parking configuration that way. So moved. Thank you. Yeah. All in favor. You're so sure that we're going to do that. I've already seen it advertised. I've seen it. There's oh, a really? sale sign. Yeah, I have too. <laughs> yes, there were. 8.75, I think. Okay, and then um, this I don't need a vote on. I just need signatures, and I only had them put on. I didn't know exactly who was going to be coming, so I was trying to make an educated guess. But I needed a signature for a lot release for the last two lots that were under covenant at the ridge. You all may know that the ridge um, the street was accepted by the city within the last couple of months. Um, but a year ago, the board um, signed off on closing out the subdivision and releasing all the covenants and the financial guarantee. Mm -hmm. But um, they never recorded the release of the lots. So now uh, the bank that owns all the lots wants to make sure, just clean up the last um, bit of that. So development way out. Right. Those are city streets? The ridge is the city street now. Yep. That will be plowed. Okay. Out, way out where? Um, so it's about as far west than 66. the town. Yeah, it's, it must be like it's right on the, the town line. line. Yeah. yeah, before you get. Yeah. So if you could. Um, That's why we did infill, John. Just yeah. sign. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's like. Sign your name, and if you don't have a slot, you can just sign below it. <laughs> sign somebody else's name. It does <laughs> okay. have a slot. And. Um, Move adjourn. Nice. John. Do I hear a second? <laughs> Dan, on top of it. All in favor? Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Wow. But Dan, you came in.